Hi, I just wanted to show a quick video on how I connected a very analog Kenwood TS520, almost a 50 year old rig, uh, to a modern SDR and uh, as, a, as a pan adapter. And I'll show you, I'll go back in time for a uh, brief minute to show you how I was able to uh, tap the intermediate frequency, the IF, out of the radio. And, uh, and, then, and then we can go from there. All right, back in flash. Okay, and here's uh, sort of where we sort of started with the process. This is the Kenwood TS520 with the case off, both the top and bottom. And uh, unlike, uh, unlike later radios, uh, the 520 doesn't have a port on the back for the intermediate frequency or the IF out. Um, and uh, what's interesting though is that there is a radio, um, a station monitor that Kenwood created called the um, SM220 uh, that was actually worked on the um, 520 and 820, uh, two radios that it worked great with, uh, but there wasn't a, uh, a plug available at the time. And so uh, Kenwood tells you how to do it yourself in this same sort of process, which I learned um, verified and was kind of um, alerted to based on the um, Kenwood hybrid uh, groups. Um, page, um, but pretty much what it says is that you have to uh, open up the case and go to the noise blinker board on the side here. And there's actually two pins which you're um, interested in. And the top one's there. There's in, and then there's ground. Then in is um, going to be the center wire on a coax, and ground is going to be the braid. Um, and uh, and uh, and also um, there's a capacitor um, that they. Uh, they, they suggested putting on there, Kenwood does, and then the ex exact specs of uh, the folks at the forum. It's just a uh, 47 picofarad um, cap that uh, I got from Mouser for next to nothing. Um, and uh, and all I did is um, just wired these in on the on the pins. Um, obviously, there's other cables that go on uh, word toward the to later parts of the, the radio. The idea about tapping the uh, the IF here is that this is before the radio um, before this the signal gets really filtered down. So you have a couple hundred uh, kilohertz of of bandwidth at this point, and that's what we're going to see in the um, in the in the pan adapter in the SDR. Um, and so these wires um, just go over here. And according to Kenwood, they actually want you to uh, solder onto this eight pin, which is right in there. Eight pin coats. This is remote on the back. Um, and then you can actually use, I don't have the eight pin plug and plug in. Um, that's actually the base, I guess, for, for vacuum tubes and you can make a plug. I didn't do that. I want to in the future. But what I did is I just wired and soldered these two wires onto a piece of thin coax, which then just runs through the hole in that plug, at least temporarily. And eventually will connect to the, the SDR. Um, that's unceremoniously laying on the floor. Uh, and so this is pretty much the setup here. Um, it's really not hard to uh, tap into the radio. It's more more uh, scary than anything uh, looking looking at everything here. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so let me, uh, let me button this up and we will return to see how this all sort of works out. All right, so we're back. So the hardware actually wasn't as uh, as confusing um, as, as it as it initially looked like it was going to be. Um, actually, though, the harder part for me was trying to figure out the software. And, and luckily, there is a lot of great resources online, uh, YouTube and elsewhere, uh, to uh, figure out how to use an SDR of lots of different flavors as a, a pan adapter. Uh, now, of course, the thing is, is that I can't have any, con you know, computer control of my rig through my computer um, because there's nothing digital about the Kenwood TS520. Um, so what you have is, it's pretty much it's just a way to uh, analyze the, uh, the 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 spectrum. And uh, there's also uh, no way to, uh, as far as I can tell, 
uh, have a have a frequency counter. Uh, and so what you have is you have frequency numbers, and uh, it looks like in a lot of ways that, that they're, they're, they're spaced correctly, the scale is there, but the numbers are sort of floating. It's a floating spectrum. And so you can tune around, uh, and it's pretty useful as a tool, uh, but you can't just... Uh, you can't have your exact frequency out of here. For that, you're relying on this awesome old school dial. Uh, and the uh, another thing uh, too is that uh, you can actually um, set this up and actually click around like an SDR and get that whole you know listen to a, a frequency um, that's that's not necessarily where you're tuned to if it's in that spectrum. You could work split. You could do stuff like that, kind of an external you know VFO. Uh, but uh, but you can't steer your radio there, um, and so it has, it has limited usefulness in that way. But it's super cool, I think. I, I'm using HD SDR. Um, I originally wanted to use a Raspberry Pi, but the Pi 3B that I had just didn't have enough juice to run uh, the GQ RX software. And so what I have here is I'm just running it as a second monitor on my computer here just kind of running over here I have that cable that I showed you running down to an RTL SDR um, version 3 dongle the cool thing is I don't need to use my ham it up uh, uh, up converter because the RTL SDR version 3 has direct sampling uh, the Q direct sampling so you can just set it up like that it works great however I did include a very cheap I don't know if it's good or not but it seems to work well 10 decibel attenuator uh, to lessen the noise and that's another somebody from uh, some a useful tip from the Kenwood hybrid group um, but I mean, this would work with a lot of different uh, radios. I think Kenwood, uh, they were talking about, Kenwood puts out a, a little big signal. Other radios might not need that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, there is, um, uh, this is a lot of actually, you know, it's fun to kind of tune this around uh, like this. It's actually part of a larger HDSDR uh, software. Um, where there's a lot of different sorts of options. Again, any of the frequency stuff, it's a, it's a floating spectrum, so it doesn't matter so much. So I just use the waterfall and the, and the spectrum itself. I'm also listening and using the filters on my radio. I could actually listen to the computer and use digital signal processing and pull out some signals, which is great because you've heard me, on the, you've heard this radio a little bit. It's you know, I live sort of under big power lines and I have a crappy loop receiving antenna right now that I'm trying to scan these bands with. So the interference is pretty bad, plus the bands aren't great right now. Uh, but, um, so you could possibly pull that out. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how much I want to be relying on the computer. Um, another thing that I'm thinking about doing is uh, this would be really cool to miniaturize. Uh, maybe make a custom box with a six or seven inch LCD screen and uh, maybe a Raspberry Pi 4B and actually paint it, you know, Kenwood Gray or Heathkit Green uh, and make like a project sort of thing that sort of fits these old radios. I'm talking about Kenwood, but this would work with, with almost anything if you can tap the, the IF um, out. Uh, let's see, before we, get, before we leave, let me just um, put it back on, uh, we're just on 40 meters right now, put it back on lower sideband, turn it up a little, um, and also, I've got it set up so I can just use the mouse wheel to uh, to zoom in and out. And let me, I uh, like to do the options and uh, get visualization. And you can do um, just the upper panel. And like, let's get out of the, let's go up the band a little bit. See what else we can sort of see. Looks like that might be something. I'll use RIT to kind of So we have Spanish speaking folks. Um, we can also just kind of zoom out, take off the RIT. Where else are we going here? And so while some interference comes up. 
And again, maybe the DSP, the, the signal processing might be useful. Uh, this old radio has pretty good filters, especially for like CW, but that might be something worth worthwhile playing with. Um, and that's something definitely that you can do as well, which might be like really cool. Um, there's also, because it's pumping in digitally, you can do things like CW skimmer and all these other kind of cool digital, like at least digital receive, um, which might be sort of fun as well. So I'm blathering on, uh, but uh, please, you know, I can answer some questions in the comments if you've got any. Um, I, this just There's a lot of resources on the, the do this online. I just took a few days to try to figure it all out. And so if I can help at all, um, I'd be happy to. All right. Thanks, everyone.